Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening in the city of Missoula and beyond. Uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Uh, it's looking to be, it's going to be start cooling off this weekend, but you can expect some of the smoky haze to be settling in and around the Missoula Valley. We are at, uh, 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 I guess the, I'll, I'll get to the air quality report after this, but here it's 57 degrees out currently. Your high is going to be 89. There's a red flag warning um, for uh, uh, basically f from some of the smoke. There's going to have area chances of thunderstorms. Then you have a chance of thunderstorms happening for tonight as well. And this pretty much going to go on through the whole weekend, but it looks like it might peak tonight as well. Um, Saturday, Sunday, you can expect some haze happening throughout the day. And then Sunday, Monday, you can expect that uh, thunderstorm to be about 20%. So it's going to be just a little bit of thunderstorm warnings that we've had a couple of those throughout. But now I'm going to kind of switch gears. I'm going to talk about uh, more of the um, Missoula and Montana air quality. So let's check it out. Uh, currently, we're in the orange, which is uh, two levels up from good. So it's unhealthy for sensitive group and just below the unhealthy level. So if you are planning on going outside, you may want to limit your outdoor exposure, but you shouldn't be too deterred by going outside as well. Um, we take a look at the little uh, area map. Here's a little uh, zoom in. If you uh, Zoom in right here, which it won't let me do. You can kind of see in this general area we are in the orange, pretty much teetering on the um, low, uh, unhealthy for sensitive group to moderate group as well. So let's talk about some news uh, in terms of where all these fires are coming from. So uh, um, the How Ridge fire may be the main fire in the region where we might be getting a lot of the smoke, but it's hardly the only one. There's a whole bunch of little fires happening all across the north, uh, the western part of the, the nation. Uh, the basically the How Ridge fires uh, went from 900 acres to about 3,500 acres on Thursday, as wind picks up near Glacier National Park, and also National Weather Service is expected to see even more. Uh, strange winds so it's not necessarily a consistent wind it's going to be kind of all over the place so a lot of fire crews are looking into uh reacting to see how uh, they react to it but of course the fire that is affecting people and uh, causing some evacuations in the essex areas up near glacier uh is uh, the Paula Ridge fire, which is at 400 acres and is threatening some structures. Of course, both fires, um, the Howe and the Paula Ridge fires are being monitored and yet have any percentage of containment. Here is uh, from IncinaWeb. So INCI web for all your needs in terms of fire. So if you guys take a look at this little map, you can kind of see uh, your fire representation. You can zoom out. You can kind of see about basically kind of get the scope of how many fires are in the area. Seems to be a highly northern region of of Montana. A lot of areas around here, but there's a lot of bulk fires around here. And let's just take a quick look. It'll, it usually, it tells you, um, it's the Coal Ridge fire. It's uh, 266 acres, and this was updated 21 hours ago. There was a fire that kind of broke out uh, on my way back, uh, I think it was last Sunday, uh, near uh, Helena. And it was um, the Shell Rock Fire, and it's 20% contained with 375 acres burning currently. So let's move on to some good news. Um, just because uh, some of the fires may be affecting us in western Montana, many of the farmers in eastern Montana are having good yields of wheat. Last year, many farmers in eastern Montana were dealing with a drought, but this year, farmers are reporting high yields of crop, particularly wheat. Um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has, has suggested it could be a statewide average of 50 bushels per acre. If Montana wheat hits the mark, the 2018 yield will be a record. Uh, wheat is at $1 billion crop for Montana, where the grain is grown in all but a few counties. With soil so dry, there was doubt winter wheat would actually germinate. But as soon as the snow started falling in December and basically kind of never really stopped, especially in the uh, heavy snow areas in Haver uh, last winter, uh, there was not much break in this precipitation until April. So. That snow moisture set up the winter wheat for a good run ahead of harvest, which began in July. Um, then wheat prices began to creep up in response to low, lower global supply. Prices are a three-year high, crawling back from a 10-year low in 2017. So not only are we going to have record high wheat, but we're also going to have record high prices as well. So the Montana economy is going to do really well in terms of wheat agriculture. 
So that's a lot of good news for if, you, if you're a farmer. But let's talk about some national news. Uh, Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, died at 76 with her battle with prostate, uh, pancreatic cancer in her hometown of Detroit, home of the Motown Records that helped launch many soul and R&B artists from her time. Moving on. <coughs> In national news, more than 300 uh, publications across the county are joining together to defend the role of free press and denounce President Trump's ongoing attacks to the news media in uh, coordinated editorials publishing Thursday, according to a tally by the Boston Globe. In the column called A Free Press press needs you the New York Times editorial board writes they're criticizing the news media for underplaying and Overplaying stories for getting something wrong is entirely right. News reporters and editorials are human and make mistakes. Correcting them is the core of our job, but insisting that truths you don't like are fake news is dangerous to the uh, lifeblood of democracy, and calling journalists the enemy of the people is dangerous, period. Um, Trump has made bashing news media, horrible, horrendous people, a staple of his candidacy and const uh, constant throughout his presidency. Um, he has tweeted that at least seven times since June, referring to news media in some way as the enemy of the people. So I'm going to stop right there. i got a couple new programs going to be airing on MCAT this weekend. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk about some of the movies that are coming out this weekend. Americans haven't spent enough time thinking about working on China. It's been said many times, and I think it's true, that the most important to bilateral relationship in the world is U.S.-China. I get, and because it's a rising power established, it's going to in many ways influence the standard of living for our kids and grandkids. If we get it right, or get it pretty much right, it will be better than if we don't. Korea is just impossible. I, I'd ask, I would ask our embassy very often, what's going on in Korea? Over and over again. I didn't get much of anything, frankly. I think that was a Nicholas Kristof article. Yeah, and I think he's right. Today, it's a beautiful day outside today. So feel free to move your meeting outside. One of the rooms is outside, it's room C. But you can do what you need to do today. This is your day. And wherever it happens, it happens. That's just the way it is. Think of a coffee break. It could be anywhere. <coughs> or a phone conversation or a, or a conversation with friends. It can be anywhere. So that's what open space is about. This is your space. This is your time to create an agenda that you're happy with, that you want. The law of mobility is another part of open space. That means you have the ability to move to a different space. If you're not contributing to that particular conversation or if you're not being contributed to, if you can get up and leave. This isn't school. You don't have to stick in your seat and be quiet. You can get up and go. And there Are you a person that is just a caring member of the community, has no specific connection to the cause, but you want to help create a world without Alzheimer's? And if that's the case, the flower we give you is orange. If you're an individual who is caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's, maybe they live across the country, maybe they live in your home. If you're an Alzheimer's or related dementia caregiver, the color of flower you have is yellow. If you're a person who has lost someone to this disease, the color of your flower is purple. And if you're a person who is living with this disease, the color of your flower is blue. It creates a very somber, but also very celebratory opportunity for us to realize that we're all brought together under different circumstances. I mean, just look around the room. Some of these folks you know, some of them you're seeing for the first time. This disease has brought us all together. And for that, I'm grateful.
A lot of great programs here on MCAT as well. You can access those by going to MCAT.org. Moving on, it's time for Pre-Critic. It's where I judge a movie based on nothing but their title and maybe a little bit of their synopsis. But let's kick things off with a movie that uh, many people are kind of already saying that you should watch. But I'm going to tell you, you don't have to watch this. For no reason, because it's a rom-com. You, you, you get exactly what you get from a rom-com. So anyways, well, rom-coms are usually about a girl whose guy does something wrong, and the guy goes over the top to prove that he really does love this girl just because he forgot something that she did or something that he did. I don't know. It's always something to do with ignorance. But anyways, but this time we have a full cast of Asian uh, actors from many different types of cultural backgrounds. You have Asian Americans, you have uh, Asians from uh, British um, grown-up territories, as long with uh, the traditional Asian culture, kind of all blending together in a nice petri dish of heritage and a movie about crazy rich Asians. And I'm talking about crazy Asians, I'm talking about crazy rich who happen to be Asian. Okay, enough of that. But just how rich is too rich? Find out in this movie. Anyways, watch this movie about the importance of money and family trying to protect their son from a gold digger, only to find out that maybe this gold digger doesn't have uh, interest in gold, but she has the heart of gold. I don't know. It's always something like that. It, you, that's exactly what you can expect from this kind of movie. Next up, we got a movie about a dog. Who doesn't like those dog movies? You know, you know like a Homeward Bound. You got uh, Underdog. A Dog's Purpose, all those kind of movies. Why not just kind of throw it back to the first dog, which is a wolf. So basically, the whole idea of this movie is a guy who's in a tribe of white people, because apparently back a long time ago, natives were only white. I don't know. That's It's this kind of movie. I don't want to get too political about it. Or am I, Is that political or racist? I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, this movie is about that. A white boy who gets separated from his tribe, breaks his leg, finds another uh, animal, a, a wolf, and then basically they kind of uh, work together to survive, and the whole movie is called Alpha. So I don't know. That's kind of what you expect. You exactly what you see is what you get. That's that's what you see with a lot of movies. And what you see with this next movie is I have no idea. Um, I, I believe it's just Mark Wahlberg in an action movie, and then that's basically it. I don't know. It's something to do with like he has to fight the government or he has to fight somebody, and it's always like the unseen forces, and he has to shoot a lot of people, and things happen. I don't know if it's a comedy or not. I can't tell anymore because he kind of blurs the lines between that. So, mile 22. It's where, uh, I guess, you stop on the way or something. I don't know. It's it's weird. It, I'm pretty sure it's like one of those like um, movies where they have to get like a witness to a certain point. But then they get stopped. Ha! Huh? Mile 22 marker. And then they got to fight. And then something happens. And I'm pretty sure... The whole idea is to get like the witness to witness protection or try to get him to testify or, or something like that. I don't know. It's it, the, the, These are the movies that we're, we're with. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it all works out. Um, sweet. So those are some of the movies and basically what you can expect uh, this weekend in terms of if you plan on going to see a couple movies. You know, I, I don't. August has always been a, a month of terrible movies, so uh, don't be surprised if a movie turns out to be just exactly what you expect it to be terrible. Uh, but of course, I just got off watching Slender Man, the movie. I just had to watch it. It was like 11% of Rotten Tomato. You almost have to watch it if it's super low rated or super high rated on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's just. Uh, it's just overall great and wonderful. All right, so uh, speaking of terrible movies, we made a. Nice little, uh, we made a nice movie with the Boys and Girls Club of Missoula County. So here is The Bob Knight. <laughs> The coveted 25 sided die is mine. <laughs> One more than 24. <laughs> Agent Jakes, 
and I would like to ask you about why you stole the 25-sided dice. Well, um, well, in a typical game, you know, 20-sided dice is pretty standard, but with the 25 dice, me rolling in, uh, you know, pun intended, is that you can pretty much gain immortality with that kind of thing. And plus, I looked up on Google, it's legit. Seriously, you're going away for a long time, and the odds are in your favor. Oh, snap! Tyson, is that you? Yeah, it's me. This case is stumping me. All the guy remembers is like a like a guy in a bird mask. Yeah, it's weird. What was that that you just grabbed? Nothing. Hmm. I guess it was just my imagination. Bob, I know you're not here, but please give me strength. Oh, there's my five minutes of laughing. Now it's time for real evil. <laughs> now for the vigilante. Little does he know I have, a, I have the secret of his power. Little does he know about Bob. All according to plan. She scare you? No. That sounds like a pretty afraid shriek. That's part of my Fitbit bit exercise. Oh, wait, I'm not wearing it right now, but it's real. It exists. Don't you worry. You know I'm here. I'm here to fight crime. Put on a badge like the rest of us. I'm doing this for Bob. I don't know who that is. He was family. Like a conjoined twin, the cops. Wow, that's pretty close. You know I'm here. It's in the warehouse district. It's the third warehouse on the left. And you can't miss it. It says bad guy. It's a pretty nice warehouse, actually. It has um orange metal walls and and um like that's where good guys are, but like where the bad guys are is in the back. And the back has a um a metal door and it has one of those submarine um door handle thingies that are like steering wheels and um I do. What? I'm the good guy, you're the bad guy, and you're going down. Ah! Time for some city council. Hey guys, the budget is now finished for the 2019 fiscal year. Uh, they did a, a budget committee meeting and they talked about what money 
the city uses, how much money is going to this, how much money goes on that, a little bit with it, a little bit of that. But let's kick things off with uh, our mayor. So Mayor John Angan, he kind of kicks things off in this uh, budget committee meeting. Uh, so here is Mayor John Angan. I continue to believe that our investment through urban renewal districts pays dividends that far outweigh the short-term effects on our general fund. Much of the economic and social success Missoula is experiencing is the product of investment by the Missoula Redevelopment Agency, whether in the form of infrastructure assistance that allows projects proposed by the private sector to happen at a scale that benefits the community in terms of employment and services, or in the construction of parks <clears throat> pardon me, in underserved neighborhoods that give children and families places to gather and play. And that public investment leverages private investment many times over. This year, those districts will give back not only to the city, but Missoula County and Missoula Public Schools as well. In short, investment in urban renewal districts is a long-term strategy for growing our tax base and for causing development that likely would not occur without that tool. All right. So um, basically, um, taxes are going up, and that was pretty clear uh, by a lot of this. The city uh, is going to set a public hearing for August 27th. On It's a Monday, uh, 7 p.m., on a resolution of the City of Missoula Fiscal Year 2019 budget uh, appropriations and capital improvement program. A lot of times they work about six, eight months on the budget meeting um, starting in January of the fiscal year, even sometimes even t uh, as early as December, maybe end of November to work on the budget for the, f the next year. I mean, it, they literally uh, take their time and they look at every avenue and how much money is going here and how much money is going there. And of course, uh, so of course, uh, the some of the places the money uh, is going, as drafted by the City of Missoula, is Park District 1, uh, setting an assessment method levy drafted from, um, to, uh, from, let's see, July 17th, and also July 17th, the Road District 1, fire special event fee, fire uh, department fee schedule, uh, fiscal year development uh, service fees, uh, A through C development service fees, fiscal year uh, water hauler fee, waste hauler, sorry, it's for... Um, the trash guy, uh, uh, setting budget appropriations and CIPs, uh, tax levy. So there's uh, levies uh, tend to be uh, one of the things that uh, generate a lot of money to certain avenues and districts and certain things uh, that the city kind of uh, deviates some of the funding, put in these areas specifically so they can pay all the people that do all the services here in the city of Missoula. The mayor talks about what their plan is for 2019. We're proposing in our capital improvement program this year uh, a little more than $8 million in street and sidewalk projects, uh, about $2.5 million in park construction and upgrades, uh, about $7 million in water system improvements, uh, about $2.5 million in wastewater system improvements, and we'll be replacing about $3.2 million in uh, equipment. Uh, there is a windy essay to be written on the structural imbalance of our state tax system and what could be done to make the system more equitable, but we're left to play the hand we're dealt, and in this case that hand requires me to propose a modest increase in taxes to provide fundamental service to a growing community, and that proposal is now in your capable hands. Uh, Dale Bickle and Lee Griffin are here. All right. So, uh, like he said, uh, Dale Bickle and Lee Griffin is, was there to uh, present a slideshow, which talked about the budget and where money is going. So you guys can check that out as well. I'm going to get kind of right through it and right to it. Um, let's see. And according to Missoula Organization, Organization of Realtors, the median price for an average home in the city of Missoula is Two hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars and two hundred. No, wait, it's two hundred sixty-eight thousand two hundred fifty dollars. And for some of the people who are kind of getting a reappraisal, some of the homes, you may want. If you're on the edge, you might be paying higher taxes. So that could be a, an equivalent of thirty-nine dollars and forty cent increase in taxes. So you may want to check what your home is under, what category, because this could affect your property tax. One of the many things about Missoula is that we do pay uh, more for our levies than many other communities in Montana. Dale Bickle, Mo Missoula Chief Administration Officer, talks about how similar we are with a lot of communities in terms of this as well. That we aren't that different than our peer communities. You know, there's, we're, yes, we're in the terms of, we're the second highest in terms of 
of a converted mill factor. That's, that's true. Um, but revenue per capita, which I think is probably the fairest measure up there, I think, you know, we're, I mean, it's just, it's, we're not, any, we're not really any different. Um, you know, so it's, it's. Yeah, it's revenue just, per just, capita. It's just the way that. Revenue per capita gets into that. It, it starts to take out of the equation the, the difference in the mill value. Values. It starts to normalize that. All right, so uh, basically uh, Brian von Losberg interrupts Dale Bickle right there, but he also kind of um, explains, and they kind of go through this a little bit more in detail later in the meeting, is uh, we're not necessarily uh, number two in terms of highest prices for levies. We're probably around number six. Um, they talk, they kind of help clarify this a little bit more. Um, uh, and also the whole per capita thing. The, the idea of the per capita is that there's definitely going to be more per capita. So a lot of time the revenue um, decreases because uh, Missoula is actually growing with population. So the taxes aren't, are growing up, but there's also a population that's going up to help uh, alleviate the, uh, the ceiling, basically, of taxes. So that's another thing they talked about as well. Um, the meeting talked about how levies and money goes to the city in terms of budgeting graphs. This meeting was the last chance to update the meeting through the committee. They're not going to be next Wednesday for a budget committee meeting. John Dabari wants to make sure that the fiscal year 2019 fis uh, will be solid and the city will not have to go back to redirect any revenue for future projects. Uh, Dale Bickle uh, responds to some of the past taxes and how trends tend to uh, continue making it easier to predict money coming in. But there's always that one or two couple things that you just never know uh, that will affect the budget because uh, it really depends upon uh, like reappraisals. Like the biggest thing was the uh, Missoula uh, organization, of, organization of Realtors, uh, which uh, used to be uh, another organization here to kind of uh, – determine how much uh, property value is in the city of Missoula. They can, so they can t uh, basically tell uh, other communities, anybody, anybody moving into Missoula, how much their house is potentially worth and how much they're paying. So anyways, here is uh, Dale Bickle with responding. At the end of the last seven year appraisal cycle, which was implemented, la you know, it was implemented on the tax bills last year, there, there were very large increases in values in 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 in, in a lot of properties. Well, in, in most properties, and really in specific and in real specific areas, there were very large increases. You know, you, we I mean, we saw over 100 percent increases in values in those things. Um, and I think people took, saw those and had those appeals, and and so I think that will be, um, you know, so I think that's a lot of this. Is my personal opinion. Um, when we get the data, uh, when we get the specific parcel data from Department of Revenue, we can we can kind of confirm that notion. Um, but uh, but going forward, because the appraisal cycle is a lot less, it should, you know, those things will hit the tax rolls faster, and it'll and it'll make more sense uh, to taxpayers that how their their property values are changing. I believe it it um, uh, creates some more predictability. Um, but it, it's always hard, and, you know, and I also want to remind council that the number that really matters to us is the value of newly taxable property, which primarily represents new construction, and that's the and that's the number that we really need. And you can see back there, and so despite the, the assessments and valuations, that is really hard to um, pick a trend on. While we try to predict it with our building permit numbers, and you know we have the valuation statistics that are published in our monthly development reports, it is very hard to derive a correlation between those two. So it's, so that, from that aspect, it's still going to be difficult. Uh, so, you, you know, think about it uh, per household earning. The city of Missoula has to basically determine how much each household um, makes and how much it's worth, and which basically your taxes don't go to the city. They go to the state and the um, United States. Um, and of course, anything that you vote on, like levies and mills and all that stuff, the money that you voted for open space bonds and stuff like that, the money goes directly to that compared to uh, your basic taxes, which is the state tax, income tax, and your um, uh, the, their uh, federal taxes. So a lot of times um, you don't know exactly how much a house is worth and your property is worth, depending on which could really affect how much money that you owe to certain levies and taxes and so forth and so forth, because it's usually cut off by the median, which is about 250. Like there's there's always like different uh, differences in like how much uh, like a bond works, because some bonds uh, back in the day when it was passed, the median was a lot lower. So anything that's $200,000 home pr or lower pays like 
uh, six thirty nine a month, and then compared to houses that are, make two hundred thousand and more, which is like thirteen forty nine uh, per month in terms of like just general taxes. So there's always that weird stopgap, not not really stopgap, but the huge transition. So it's because yeah, it's 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 really kind of hokey if you really th if you really think about it. It's kind of like confusing because the city has to uh, put the money down and get the budget ready for the next fiscal year so they can pay basically to put to provide lights in the downtown area and beyond and just pay all the bills and pay for the trash cleanup and all that stuff so there's a lot of things going on here as well they have the public hearing which is set for August 27th. You can watch this whole meeting because they uh, basically have a slideshow you guys can watch and you go, it's the bu the budget committee meeting. Um, all you gotta do is go onto the city's website which is ci.missoula.mt.us. You click on your government, actually you don't even click, you just put your cursor over your government, this thing will pop down. You go to agendas, webcast, minutes, and it'll bring you to this nice page right here. And then you just click on agenda items. If it shows you that it has the MP4, um, usually, generally you'll see uh, if there's any videos through MP4. But if you just see agendas, that means they're upcoming meetings and you can always tell by the date. And it's always a good resource for anybody who's interested in seeing what the city is um, has done and what they plan on doing in the upcoming meetings. But then again, they gave you, they gave uh, they they've had lots of meetings with the budget budget committee meetings most Wednesdays during regular committee meetings, and you can check that all on their website. All right, so that's pretty much it for your city council report. The budget committee uh, is moving forward. Uh, what else do I need to refer to as well before I? Uh, in this part of the video, uh, in video, I'm live broadcasting. So. Um, Let's talk about some social media stuff. So MCAT, we're going to be starting to uh, do sports soon. So August 24th, which is a week from today, MCAT will be live streaming the Skyview versus Sentinel High School football game out of MCPS Stadium, otherwise known as Big Sky High School's uh, football stadium. But it was named MCPS Stadium because all the high schools in Missoula share the stadium. So we'll be live streaming from there. And uh, you'll be able to watch it on MCAT on our replays, which we usually run on Sundays here on MCAT Channel 189. So to find out those programs and more, you can go to MCAT.org. Missoula's Comedia. M Missoula's community media resources, all your resource needs and more. Our zombie camps have wrapped up, but we'll be uh, hopefully offering you guys a link on our webpage so you guys can be able to watch any of those high school sports. We're going to be uh, live streaming f uh, boys football and girls volleyball in the fall season from basically next week all the way until the end of October. All right, so you can check that out. Make sure you uh, like us on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. But if you want to find out more information about, about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all sorts of wonderful things. All you got to do is go to the Google and Google Wake Up Missoula. So, yeah, that's about that for that. Uh, I got some events. So I'm going to throw it to an art clip. And this is an art installation that's happening at the Missoula Art Museum well until September 16th. So you guys have plenty of time to check this one out. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about all your Friday events. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some of your events for Friday. Friday is kicking things off with a bunch of uh, indoor sports kind of camps all happening. So let's uh, start out with uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots Acro Sports Center is all the places that you guys want to check out for a lot of your kids who you want to get into gymnastics or if your kid is accident prone and you want them to be in a safe um, indoor padded area those are the places to go check out it's starting right now and it goes well until noon and they also have a bunch of little day camps as well for a lot of kids of all ages story time and tiny tales hey if you want your kid to not worry about um falling and um whatever story time and tiny tales is a great place for kids to sit down and get engaged with a book because reading is important and kids learn a lot of words when they're really young so the earlier you can expose them to books the faster and the smarter they will be uh, uh, compared to all the other kids so um <laughs> what was i going to say uh uh curve your uh make your kid better than the other kids yeah, why not? Uh, <laughs> and that's at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 this morning. Um, and most mornings, um, hands-on science, eyeball dissection. Uh, uh, Spectrum Discovery Center always has a, a science activity every single day from Wednesday through Saturday. They usually open around 11 a.m. And one of the things uh, they're doing today is eyeball dissection. So they're, uh, it's three, $3.50 for anyone four and over, but if you're under three, you get in free. Uh, Cribbage and Bridge is going to be the Missoula Senior Center starting at 1230, and you can check all that out uh, um, anytime, most days they happen. The Emperor's, new, the Emperor's New Clothes is an original show by MCT inspired by the original uh, Emperor's New Clothes, um, so they usually rewrite a lot of old uh, timey public domain type plays for the Missoula Children, Children's Theater where they go out and do all these camps, but MCT in Missoula, why not do these camps at MCT? So these camps happen all week long, and then they have two different performances, one at 4 and one at 6 p.m. Two different groups of kids, um, all do it with the help of your talented Missoula Children's Theater actors. Wanting to impress a new friend, uh, but where to stop when the clothes and other people's opini opinions become more important than the people of the kingdom? Trouble brews to help their beloved emperor find the way back into his heart. His true friends create an elaborate birthday suit for the emperor to wear for his birthday parade celebration. The emperor quickly and humbly learns that sometimes less is more. Predator feeding is happening at 4 p.m. at the Missoula Insectarium. See who's hungry today, where they feed crickets and other small bugs to even bigger bugs or either anthropods. So check it all out. Predator feeding starting at 4 p.m. at the Missoula Insectarium. Bamboo Bodies, Downtown Desk Collective. Bamboo Bodies is based on several movements of the five element therapy. Traditional Chinese medicine recognizes the correlation of health and changes in season. Uh, we eat differently in this, as the summer moves into winter. We dress differently as winter warms into summer. I don't know about dressing differently, but um, it's just a great way to kind of do some body movement and dancing. It's just a fun physical activity. It tricks you into, uh, it tricks you into exercise, and that's what dance is for. And it happens from 4 to 5 p.m. at the Downtown Dance Collective. Top Hat Lounge, fun time, uh, family, f Top Hat. <laughs> top, top Hat, family fun time from 6 to 9 p.m. Hey, it work's over, you want to spend some time with your kids, and you want to uh, kick one back, go on to the Top Hat, have a beer, hang out, have your kids run around, make sure they don't touch the musician's instruments because they usually have a band playing later that night. Parents, night out at Missoula YMCA. YMCA is hosting a night out with the kids having an evening with friends at the Missoula YMCA. Uh, children will swim and rock climb before enjoying pizza and kid-friendly movie. It's open to kids ages six weeks to 11 years old. Children under three will spend the evening in the Child Watch Center. So if you have a child that's under three, you'll be able to have them in a daycare center. So uh, if you do plan on going this, it's uh, Bring swim gear, a towel, and a pillow. Uh, it's twenty-seven dollars for the first child. Uh, of course, twenty-one dollars if you're a member of YMCA. Fifteen dollars for every additional child, and it's uh, ten dollars with family membership. So, Circus Du Jour is happening at Mask Studio. Mask Studio is a uh, fun, awesome silk aerial silks, all sorts of different dancing, all sorts of wonderful things. Aerial six is their uh, their mainstay at Mask. Uh, it includes a classy of evening of live music, theor theoretical circus displays, and delectable three-course meal. Limited tables, get your tickets to reserve a seat, local green salad with basil, they lemon fig chicken with goat cheese and bacon served over greens and rice pilaf, um, seasonal um, vegetable uh, gratin served with a balsamic reduction, 
Hmm. Uh, unless they have chocolate torts. So you can check all that out, and there's tickets are available at Mask Studio. Uh, you can always go to their website to find out more information as well. It's Mask, M-A-S-C. Um, cheap date night. You want a cheaper date night than going to uh, Circus Olay, to Circus Du Jour at Mask Studio? Missoula Public Library is hosting Ready Player One at the Missoula uh, Large Meeting Room, I believe, um, and it runs 140 minutes long. You can call 721-BOOK for more information, and it's just open for anybody who just wants to pop in there and check it out. There's another big show happening at the Downtown Dance Collective. There's a bunch of uh, cool shows that are happening. They're doing a show. It's called Title of Show. Um, it runs August 17th, 18th, 24th, and 25th at 7.30 p.m. in the Downtown Dance Collective. Um, a, a musical about two guys writing a musical about two guys writing a musical. Uh, Jeff and Hunter, two struggling writers, hear about a new musical th uh, theater festival. However, the deadline for submission is a mere three weeks away. With nothing to lose, the pair decides to try to create something new with the help of their friends, Susan, Heidi, Larry, on the 88s. So it takes in from a space of the festival application form, which asks for the title of show following Hunter and Jeff and their friends on a journey through the gauntlet of creative self-expression. Downtown Nights Collective happening tonight and tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. and then again next Friday and Saturday. And that pretty much does it for your Friday shows. I do want to show you the art clip again because this art clip will probably end after next Wednesday because it ends on the August 23rd and this is from the Missoula Art Museum. So when I come back I'll talk about some of your weekend events and more. Hey guys, uh, summer uh, might be wrapping up and some of the kids might be going to school, but it's never too late to go to the Saturday Farmer's Market. Every single Saturday, well until October, you guys can check out all the Saturday markets that go on from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every single Saturday. But of course, if you can't do Saturdays, there's always a Tuesday night market that happens by the red X's just over yonder. And I'm pointing it because it's my direct direction to the Farmer's Market. BMW Flea Market, Hellgate Lions Park. Love to sell, love to shop, love to support local causes. BMW Flea Market is for you. It starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, Hellgate Lions Park, um, West, River, West Riverside. Uh, from the fancy to the fantastical, it's got a lot to offer. Booths from outside and inside the barn. A fundraiser to support Hellgate Lions Park. Missoula Under Construction, kids, kids Drive Big Rig. So this is something you've probably have been hearing on the radio all about, hey, kids get to drive cats. And by cat, it's the company that does construction type stuff. So you get a bulldozer. I, I don't know if it's a bulldozer. Oh, yeah, you get an operated bulldozer, forklift, and so much more on this one-day fun extravaganza. Whew. I didn't write that. I would have never written that. But where kids get to drive big rigs. Visit all kinds of awesome builders and doers in When I Grow Up Tent, what it's like to be an electrician, a plumber, and a pipe fitter. Get your hands-on activities. Get a taste of the trade. Visit all activities and cool prizes uh, a cool prize you can build with. Uh, ticket prices are $5 each for pickup at the Missoula Food Bank and Community Center during open hours, 545 for your tickets mailed 
to prior to the event, processing fees apply for online ticket purchases as well. Rocky Mountain Alpha Foundation is doing their own day as well. It's called Game Day, and they're going to be running this from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Wolf Spider Masks, Mizzou and Secretarium, hosts a, a craft event uh, happening at, at the, through the Mizzou Butterfly House, and it's a fantastic world of spires that don't weave webs. Um, they also discuss how these spires capture prey without using sticky silk, and they chat We'll, and they'll craft a wolf spider mask to take home. Uh, the resident wolf spider, Luna, will be on the table to meet. So you get to actually meet a real live wolf spider for inspiration. Uh, Jesse Beer, phenomenal fa farewell. Uh, Saturday, tomorrow at 1 p.m. at Shakespeare and Company, a uh, 93-year-old World War II veteran, writer, and retired professor of English, Jesse Beer, um, penned several novel novels, short stories, plays, and uh, essays and nonfiction during his tenure at the University of Montana, published in his 93rd year, A Celebration of Life, Beauty, and co um, Comradeship. Co comradeship? Oof. Camaraderie, I think that's probably what the word is looking for. This masterful, uh, multifaceted portrait of human and mother nature also offers up some haunting, powerful, affecting, starky, starkly honest poems, as well as Beer's take on creativity with discipline of poetry itself. And that's checking out at 1 p.m. in the afternoon at Shakespeare and Company. But of course, we're skipping so much of what's happening in the afternoon. They still have title of show at the Downtown Dance Collective. Missoula Outdoor Cinema is going to be playing... V for Vendetta. It's rated R, so you may want to watch who goes to this movie. Um, it's the 16 years of Missoula Outdoor Cinema. This year, the, the dedicated committee has chosen nine movies from a list of 200 submissions by their Facebook page. So if you want to submit any movies, you go to the Facebook page of the Missoula Outdoor Cinema. Uh, basically, that'll wrap up your Saturday, Friday and Saturday. But if you are interested in checking out more events, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. It's a great way to check out all the things that are happening in the city of Missoula, but I just kind of gave you the nice little day uh, brief events that are happening around here, and these are some of the things that you can check out, some of the late night events that are happening in the city of Missoula. But I also want to mention that uh, Bird Cam is available. Um, you can go to YouTube or you can look up the Cornell, or I, I always look up uh, Osprey Live Cam Missoula. You know, nothing too fancy, but I just want kind of, it really helps. It's the Cornell Lab, University of Montana Bird Lab. So as you can see here, they're probably going to try to get another shot of that bird as well. I think of the bird kind of flew off and it's part of the Montana Osprey Project. So a nice little interlude to kind of, kind of show you guys. And of course, I'm going to go to Alpole View camera. See, and that's where they nest just um, near the Bitterroot Trail. So it looks like the birds are out fishing, and you should be out too. It is Friday, and you're going to kick off your weekend. you got to kick it off right. The birds are already out of the nest, so you might want to get out of that nest too. So uh, <laughs> thanks for joining me, and I won't keep you any longer. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on Wednesday, August 27th. <laughs>